the trumpet and bowl judgments. The first trumpet sounds and vegetation is struck. The first bowl is poured out and loathsome sores come upon men. The first angel with his trumpet sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Then, the first angel with the bowl, went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. The angel with the trumpet and the angel with the bowl, work together to bring the first judgment. Christians who are here on earth, are those who were not killed during the tribulation of the first six seals, and they are not affected by the loathsome sores, for they did not receive or take the mark of the beast on their foreheads or on their hands. They were spared from the wrath of God because they did not worship the image of the beast but continued to worship God the Father and keep their faith and their testimony of Jesus. Therefore, the wrath of God is not against the godly people in Christ Jesus, it is against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. The judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice wickedness. They will not escape the judgment of God. The Lord is rich in goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, knowing that the goodness of God leads us to repentance. However, those in accordance with the hardness and impenitent heart, they have treasured up for themselves wrath for the trumpet and bowl judgments. The second trumpet sounds and the seas are struck. The second bowl is poured, and the sea turns to blood. The angel with the trumpet and the angel with the bowl, work together to bring the second judgment. Then the second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. The third trumpet sounded, and the waters were struck. Then the third bowl was poured, and the waters turned to blood. The angel with the trumpet and the angel with the bowl, worked together to bring the third judgment. Then the third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. Wormwood is a plant with a strong bitter taste. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water, because it was made bitter. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And John heard the angel of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. For it is their just due. And John heard another angel from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Here again, a third the waters and the springs are struck with bitter water and blood caused by a star called Wormwood. A great star, with the name Wormwood, fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water, and many men died from the water, because it was made bitter. Christians are spared from drinking this bitter water, for the Lord directed them to the two-thirds of the rivers and springs of water that were not affected, and they drink from those. Only those who have shed the blood of saints and prophets, the Lord, have now given them blood to drink. For it is their just due. The fourth trumpet sounds and the heavens are struck. The fourth bowl is poured, and men are scorched. The angel with the trumpet and the angel with the bowl work together to bring the fourth judgment. Then the fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And John looked, and he heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, 
and they did not repent and give him glory. The angel with the fourth trumpet now strikes the heavens. A third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. The fourth angel with the bowl also strikes the heavens and pours out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to the angel to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed, sworn, and cursed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and the wicked did not repent and turn away from sin, nor did they give God glory. Therefore, after the hardness and impenitent of the wicked men's heart, they treasured up unto them wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. God protects his people from the great heat of the sun. And when a third of the day did not shine, God gave light to Christians and likewise the night. The Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The angel with the trumpet and the angel with the bowl work together to bring the fourth judgment. The fifth trumpet sounds, and locusts is released from the bottomless pit. Then the fifth bowl is poured, and there is darkness and pain. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and John saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So, the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth. And to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days men will seek death and will nor find it, they will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, the throne of Satan, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain and their sores and did not repent of their deeds. One woe is past, behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. There are two kinds of people here on earth during the fifth trumpet. They are those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads, and the locusts were commanded to torment them but not kill them. And they are those people who have the seal of God, and the locusts were commanded not to touch them or harm any grass, tree, or any green thing. The Lord protects his people from the locusts. His people have his seal. Christians are sealed with the Holy Spirit from the time that they turn to Christ, at that moment in time, they are sealed with the Holy Spirit. As many as receive Jesus, to them, the Father gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The Father who establishes us in Christ has anointed us and has sealed us and given us his Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. We are not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom we are sealed for the day of redemption. The locust had wings that sounded like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt those for five months who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. The sixth trumpet sounds and four angels are released from the great river Euphrates. The angel with the trumpet and the angel with the bowl work together to bring the sixth judgment. Then the sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and John heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So, the four angels, who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year, were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was two hundred million, John heard the number of them. And he saw the horses in the vision, those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, 
hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents, having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind, who were not killed by these plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons, and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries, of their sexual immorality or their thefts. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Then John saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, that is great Babylon, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Then they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. This will strictly be the battle between the satanic kingdom that will war against Jesus and his kingdom at the battle of Armageddon. The Lord reminds his people on earth, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches, and keeps his garments, lest he walks naked, and they see his shame. The people who had the seal of God were not included in the third of mankind killed, because the Lord promised his people that he would keep them from the hour of trial, which would come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on earth. Therefore, Christians were part of the two-thirds of mankind who did not die. However, the rest of mankind, that is, the two-thirds of the wicked who were not killed by these plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons, and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood which can neither see nor hear nor walk. They are worshipping and bowing down to Mary's statues, dead saints' statues, and images, as people do today, and they will continue to do worship gods of wood, stone, silver, and gold, even during the sixth plague. And they did not repent of their murders, their sorceries, or their sexual immorality or their thefts. People who are still in heavy bondage and controlled by Satan continue to worship demons and do evil, even during the sixth seal of the Great Tribulation. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I will give a white stone, and on the stone a new name written which no one knows except him who receives it. John saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. And a rainbow was on his head, his face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand. And he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now when the seven thunders uttered their voices, John was about to write, but he heard a voice from heaven saying to him, Seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and do not write them. The angel whom he saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer, but in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished, as he declared to his servants the prophets. The mystery declared to his servants the prophets of how the Lord would bring an end to this age, he is now going to finished. John eats the little book. Then the voice which John heard from heaven spoke to him again and said, Go, take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So, he went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to John, Take and eat, and it will make your stomach bitter but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then John took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in his mouth. But when he had eaten it, his stomach became bitter. And he said to John, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. The Two Witnesses 
This will be the second woe coming. John was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court, which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles. The Jews and Christians worship God at the wall during this time, which separates them from the dome of the rock occupied by the Gentiles. During the three and one half years, Christians will be separated from the Gentiles. They are worshipping in the temple of God, while the Gentiles are treading the holy city Jerusalem underfoot for forty-two months, three and one half years. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days, three one half years, clothed in sackcloth. The two olive trees at the right of the lampstand and at its left are, two anointed ones, who stand beside the Lord God of the whole earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in the same manner. These have power to shut heaven, so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to strike the earth with all plagues, as often as they desire. The Dome of the Rock is situated on the site where the second temple was located, and it had been given to the Gentiles. Prophecy reveals that Muslims will tread the holy city for forty-two months. When they finish their testimony, the beast, who is Satan, that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days, and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And the wicked who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Remember that Christians will be separated from the Gentiles during the three and one half years that the anointed ones prophesy. Now after the three and a half days the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. In the same hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake seven thousand people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. The Sealed of Israel After these things John saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then he saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth, the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And John heard the number of those who were sealed. One hundred and forty-four thousands of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Of the tribe of Judah twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulun twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin twelve thousand were sealed. The Danites are not numbered here. One reason why I think that they are not listed here is because in the days that there was no king in Israel, the tribe of the Danites adopted Micah's idolatry. The children of Dan set up for themselves the carved image, and Jonathan the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. So, they set up for themselves Micah's carved image which he made, all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. In the invasion of the Assyrians, and their being exiled, their history was lost. 
The Danites were never the servants of God because they were not virgins, their mouth was found with deceit, and found with fault before the throne of God. It seems to me that they never repented, therefore, they were not included to be sealed on their foreheads along with the list of the tribes of the children of Israel. Therefore Benjamin, Rachel's youngest son, or twelve thousand of the Benjamites, were numbered among those to be sealed. There are four angels standing at the east, west, north, and south corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then another angel ascending from the east, had the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, and then told them not to harm the earth, the sea, or the trees until they have sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. And the number of those who were sealed, one hundred and forty-four thousands of all the tribes of the children of Israel. The one hundred and forty-four thousand Israelites were sealed with the Father's name written on their foreheads. Then John looked, and behold, Jesus standing on Mount Zion, and with him were the one hundred and forty-four thousand, having his Father's name written on their foreheads. John heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunder, and he heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. They sang as if it were a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures, and the elders, and no one could learn that song except the hundred and forty-four thousand who were redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow Jesus wherever he goes. They were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to Jesus, and in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Has God cast away his people? Certainly not. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. The Lord at this present time, has reserved for himself a remnant according to the election of grace. Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect has obtained it, and the rest are blinded. Just as it is written God has given them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear, to this very day. Do not be ignorant of this mystery, lest we should be wise in our own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Israel has not stumbled that they should fall. However, through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Now if their fall is riches for the world, and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Israel will in the end, be saved because Israel has a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. They are ignorant of God's righteousness and seeks to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. A remnant of Israel will be sealed as never before. They were many Jews that came to Christ out of Israel. Isaiah cried out concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because the Lord will make a short work upon the earth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Then John saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and springs of water. This is the last sign Jesus gave of his coming and of the end of the age. He said that the gospel of the kingdom would be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. This is the last chance for anyone who wants to be saved and receive eternal life, during this great tribulation. The unsaved is to repent, to fear God, and to give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come. The Lord gave Paul the grace to preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what the fellowship of the mystery is, which from the beginning of the ages had been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus, the Christ, 
to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now God still hands out his grace for a second time before his judgment to be saved in Jesus by the everlasting gospel being preached by an angel to those who dwell on the earth. Whoever will hear Jesus' word and believe in the Father who sent him, will have everlasting life, and will not come into judgment, but have passed from death into life. The hour of his judgment is now coming, when the dead will hear the voice of Jesus, the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. He is God's Son, Jesus. We are not to marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good, to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil, to the resurrection of condemnation. Pray that we will be in the first resurrection, the resurrection of life. The third woe is coming, and here is the patience of the saints, here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then John heard a voice from heaven saying right, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works follow them. During this whole great tribulation, the Lord has been our shield and buckler. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will take refuge. However, Christians will now die during the third woe, and many will be killed by the events coming upon the earth to clear the earth for the new earth. Christians will still be killed because they will not worship the image of the beast and they will not take the mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. Also, there will be multitudes of Gentiles and pagans under the Antichrist kingdom who would turn to the kingdom of God, by accepting Jesus as their Savior during the preaching of the everlasting gospel. Therefore, every Christian who die in the Lord from now on and every new Christian, those who died after getting saved during the angels' preaching, will all rest from their labors and their works will follow them. Remember, the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we will always be with the Lord. Hallelujah! This was the mystery of God, which has been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. Then a second angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The second angel that follows introduces in advance the coming fall and judgment of the great city of Babylon, Rome, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people because she has made all the earth drunken with the wine of her false doctrine, of the wrath of her fornication, idolatry, graven images, idols, blasphemy, and immorality. She confused the nations with her satanic works of combined doctrines of Babylon, pagan, Judaism, and mysticism, all in calling her blended religion Christianity. Now she is doomed to destruction and the destruction will be doubled. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. He who overcomes, and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, they shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my father, and I will give him the morning star. Amen. If this video has been a blessing to you, please. Subscribe. Like and share.